So on question number 10, we were given an alternating EMF represented by the equation. This is our equation as we are given E is equal to 125, which is the maximum value, sine 200 pi T. So before this T, this part that we have represents uh, represent the omega, all right? So that's omega t. Remember, it's supposed to be e is equal to e max sine of what? Of omega t plus or minus alpha. So we are not given the plus or minus alpha. So this is our omega then. As we have for the pi, so it means this whole part is in radians, all right? So this one with the time, together combined becomes in what? In a radiance, if you combine it with what? With the time, okay? So the question was to calculate the following, the effective value of the EMF. So remember the effective value is the RMS value. As we had our notes before, we talked about this one, the RMS value is our effective or what? the virtual value. So they want you to calculate the RMS value there. So we have got the maximum value, remember? So 10.1 already, our maximum value, we can see it as what? 125. So that's 125 volts. So meaning to say, our RMS can be determined from this. That's 0 0.7, uh, 0 0.7 of what? Of the maximum value. So that was simply a substitution to be uh, done. The maximum value, which is 125. So some textbook, they can use this one as VP, like EP, peak value, P for peak value, right? So just use the way uh, you are having from your textbook, all right? So that was going to give us uh, 88. Uh, this was going to give us 88,375 volts. So we've got RMS value, which is our effective value. 10.2, the time period of the EMF. So T, remember, it is one over frequency. I explained this one before, time is one over frequency, but we do not have the frequency. But frequency is omega over two pi. So me say time is also from that reciprocal two pi over omega. So we can use the two pi over omega since we have the omega, like I was saying, this is our omega here, 200 pi. So that is divided to 200 pi. That was going to give us the time in what? In seconds. So that was going to give us 0, uh, 0, 0,01 in what? In, uh, in seconds. Okay, then we move on to the calculation of the magnitude of the instantaneous EMF, 1,25 milliseconds after the beginning of the cycle. So we want to calculate E, the instantaneous value. That's our 10.3. But we are given the time as what? 1,25 milliseconds. So in place of the T, we're going to substitute that value. So that was going to be 200 pi times the time, 1,25 milliseconds times 10 to the exponent of what? Negative 3. So if you are to use this part as it is like this, make sure that your calculator is in radians because of this omega that we have right per second. So this one, it means we are in right per second. So the whole of it, it becomes under radians. So I said for you to use your calculator in degrees, you must multiply, therefore here, you must multiply by what? 57,3 degrees so that you use your calculator in degrees as the whole of this section that we are seeing is under degrees. So it means we are going to calculate our E direct. You don't need to change your calculator as it is under the degree mode. So it was going to give you 88,393. So that is uh, the instantaneous value at the given time, at the given time.
Another question, it was to calculate the time it takes for the EMF to reach its maximum value. Remember, the maximum value is 125. So what will be the time when it reaches 125, when this instantaneous value that we had before this one, it is now the same as 125. That is what they're asking you. So the, this one, it is back to your trigonometry, guys. So you take your E as 125 as you are given as the maximum value. So 125 is equal to the rest of this. You repeat it as it is. So this is 125, the sine of 200 pi T. So since you have to calculate the value of T, there's a condition where you're going to find arc sine. And once you find arc sine of a certain value, if you use this one in radians, it means your answer is under the radian concept. So for us to have the degree u, so that we just use our calculator under degrees, we must convert this radian to the degree, just like what we had here when we substituted the time. Here we do not have the substitute, but we want this whole section to be under degrees. So we are going to do just like the same uh, the same part of our previous case. Uh, multiply this one by what? 57,3 degrees so that the whole part here will be under degrees. Okay, so let's find our T. How can we find T? There is a 125 here, which is multiplying. So divide by that 125 both sides. Uh, divide by 125. This was going to cancel. This was going to cancel. So... It means the sine, okay, let me have it this way. So it means the sine of uh, 200 pi T times 57,3 degrees is equal to what? Since we divided this part, we now have what? A one. So to get rid of this sign from your mathematics, guys, how do you remove this sign to write this side? It will be arc sine arc sine like this. So it will be arc sine of one. So meaning to say, you are going to remain with this part, which represents what? The angle, equivalent to the angle that you're going to get there. So meaning to say, uh, 200 pi T times 57,3 degrees is equal to arc sine one. And arc sine one was going to give us 90 degrees. It's an angle that you're getting. So it's an angle to an angle. An angle to an angle. So that is where I was saying you must change this one to degrees by multiplying by so that on your calculator, you know that the answer is under degrees. But if you were using radians, you're going to get your answer in radians. You don't need to use this. You use the radian concept. You're still going to get the same uh, answer there. So how can you find T? We must divide uh, both sides by what? Uh, 200 pi times 57,3. All right, there's no need for us to write that degree there. No problem, times 57,3. So this was going to cancel. This was going to cancel. So you remain with what? With the time in this case. So our time is equal to this part. All right, so just use your calculator, divide everything as you see it. It was going to give you 0, 0,002499, something like that, which we can um, convert to the milliseconds. Remember, milli, that's times 10 to the exponent of uh, negative 3. So it was going to be 2,5. So that's 2, comma, this one was going to change 2,5 uh, milliseconds times 10 to the exponent of negative 3 means what? A milli. So that's how you can have this question answered. Just make sure you do revise as many questions as you can uh, from this part. As we can see, it's just uh, yeah, a little bit of your entry part. So you've done this before. Just make sure you continue with many questions.